If you didn't know any better, you would naturally assume that these guys are all just hanging out at a gym somewhere in Hawaii. But while all these fighters grew up in the islands, they now call Las Vegas home. And the Extreme Couture Gym is their new gathering place. Oh yeah, these guys are my family, you know? Even uh, not the Hawaii guys, just the guys at Extreme Couture in general. Everyone here is my family. And it feels like that. Named after former MMA champ Randy Couture, the gym first started attracting Hawaii fighters little more than a decade ago with the arrival of Brad Tavares, who turned professional in 2008. A half dozen years later, he invited another local boy, Dan Ige, to join him. He invited me up about four years ago. I actually came out and did a few training camps up here uh, when I was living back in Hawaii. And I, I just kind of felt at home here, you know? And uh, so when I you know, finally made the move, he invited me to his house, slept on his couch for a little bit till I got on my feet. But yeah, we, we got tons of Hawaii talent out here and I don't know what it is. It's just like, you know, it, it's a family, you know, Ohana vibe over here. And like, we just, it just feels like family here, you know? Alfuni Pogoa was the next fighter to make the move, something he says gave him not only a fresh start, but set him on a better path. Kind of was getting into trouble a little bit. Um, we came from the same gym back home, MMAD, um, but I was like little knucklehead. Uh, my cousin Colin Monsanas trained at the gym with us as well, good friend of Brad. Like, got me set up with Brad. Her dad was moving, was like, hey, Let's, let's get out there together. Jumped on the plane and we made our way here. It's, it's, been a, it's been a great move since then. From there, that new Las Vegas family, or Ohana, continued to grow quickly. A fresh start, but not an easy path. I mean, growing up my whole career uh, was basically fighting for free. Um, back in Hawaii, uh, can't tell you how many fights I fought for free. So it, it, it's just been a grind, you know, knowing that eventually one day I would make it to the top and getting out of our comfort zone. You know, staying in Hawaii was, you know, it's a comfortable place for me to live. You know, growing up there, it's, it's easy to get distracted. We go to the beach, go surf all the time. You know, maybe we're not 100% focused on our fighting career, but when I'm here, there's no distractions. I'm just 100% focused. and you know, focus on fighting and getting better. Now, Ige and the growing number of other former Hawaii fighters say they're in a place where everybody is pushing one another to get better. I just knew for me personally, um, I needed the growth, not only like getting better in skill and fighting with all these top-notch guys and world-class uh, professionals out here. It was, it was more of a an intellect for me and more to expand my horizons and I knew that if I want to be the person that I want to be for my people back home uh, this is a necessary step in the process. Oh it's been crucial. Um, I feel like this has been uh, a big part of the reason why I've been so successful. Um, I feel like the distractions haven't been there. I'm, I'm less comfortable here so I can just focus on like training and getting better you know. Naturally, all these fighters have Hawaii in their heart and in their blood, but they say there's no question that the road to turning professional, at least for them, runs through the desert. Punaheli Soriano has been fighting professionally and winning for a couple of years now. After I graduated college, I didn't really have plans. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just going around, job to job. Nothing felt right. And uh, Dan Ige actually invited me to come to the gym and start wrestling with these guys, and I just kind of fell in love with the sport from then on. And while they all fight out of Las Vegas now, they will always represent Hawaii. And thanks in part to those who have come before them, they look forward to representing the 808 here at home sometime sooner than later. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, you see other promotions out there like Bellator, um, they've had two successful events in Hawaii now. Um, it's only a matter of time for the UFC to come to Hawaii. And like you said, we have Max, VJ, 
myself, Yancy Medeiros, Ray Charles, you know, tons of guys from Hawaii now in the UFC. But until that day comes, the Ninth Island will be home and these fighters will continue to push one another to be better, both inside and outside of the cage. Definitely, you know, we, uh, you know, we got tons of Hawaiian guys here. You know, we're all fighting, all getting better. Um, it's just nice to have each other, to push each other, and you know, encourage each other, and just feed off each other's energy and mana, and just get better. And we're we're all here, we're all hungry, and you know, making our way to the top. Oh yeah, just you know, you gotta you gotta be committed. Just coming out here by yourself, you, know, you got your friends and stuff. But it's different when you got no family, no like, no real home. You gotta kind of make this your home. That's, that's, it's a little tough, but we make it happen. Commended to anybody in any profession. You know, living back home, you got a you got an island chain this big. Um, I, I recommend you just go off for a little bit. You know, you can you can get lost or whatever, you, whatever you, where life takes you. But you know, as long as you have your roots, you can pull yourself right back. You don't forget where you come from. That's the main thing.